Hi, my name is Caroline Bantug and I'm a senior at Tyler Consolidated High School. For the Science and the Arts, I have created an invocative sculpture using extracted strawberry DNA and cast plastic, melding the organic with the inorganic. I was first struck with this idea in 10th grade biology, and now, two years later, that idea has finally been fully realized. So now, let's rewind back to the beginning. In order to create my sculpture, multiple mediums and scientific processes were used. I first sketched the design and then sculpted my figure out of plastilino oil-based clay. This is the first instance where science was used to my advantage. Because oil does not evaporate as water does, the oil-based clay would not dry out or crack over the long production period. I then placed the figure in a disposable container and clear coated it, allowing for easier removal from the upcoming rubber mold. And as I have hinted, the next step in the process was to brush on, layer by thin layer, rubber mold, the latex which would become the flexible mold for my sculpture. As the water evaporated between each coat, the latex molecules came into contact with each other, joining to create a continuous polymer, achieving a solid latex film. Once the rubber mold was sufficiently thick, the next step was to make the mother mold out of plaster, or plaster of Paris, as it is otherwise known. This name originates from the large gypsum deposit outside of Paris, France, where it was used to create some of the first plasters. Plaster is a gypsum-based material sold as a powder. When this calcium sulfate powder is mixed with water, the gypsum reforms and crystallizes, releasing the heat needed to cure the plaster as well as drive off the excess water, hardening it. While the plaster was curing, I spent several days extracting the DNA that would be used in my final sculpture. I used strawberries to gather the DNA I need because they are octoploid, meaning they have eight copies of each chromosome in a single cell. DNA is stored in the nucleus of a cell, so first I had to mash the strawberries to break down their cellulose cell walls. The mash was then mixed with 10 milliliters of extraction buffer, which is a solution of detergent and salt that breaks down the lipid bilayer of the cellular membranes and removes the proteins bound to the DNA. The mixture is then strained through a cheesecloth to remove the cellular debris, but allowing the DNA to pass through. Two milliliters of this final solution is then pipetted into a small tube held at a 15 degree angle, and then five milliliters of 95% ethanol is slowly added to the top. Because DNA is insoluble in alcohols, it precipitates out a solution to the line between the two liquids. At this point, the DNA clumps together, making it visible. Using a wooden dowel, the DNA is then spooled and extracted. It is stored in the 95% ethanol because it will not dissolve, and it keeps the enzymes, known as DNA endonucleases, from breaking down the DNA. By then, the plaster was finally cured, and after removing the clay figure, the mold was ready for casting. I decided to pour a sample figure without DNA to see how my final sculpture would turn out. I used Cast and Craft's clear polyester casting resin. The resin was mixed with a catalyst which lowered the activation energy of the curing reaction, starting the hardening process. After allowing the plastic to harden for two days, I finally removed my first cast piece. I was finally ready to pour my final sculpture. I prepared more plastic resin and filled the mold with equal amounts of plastic and DNA. The curing process of the plastic forced the ethanol from the figure, which then required a second pouring. This resulted in the different opacities of the figure. The particulate and fragmental pieces of DNA stayed suspended in the torso, giving it a cloudy appearance, while the longer clumps of DNA migrated to the arms and legs, where they can clearly be seen. I am proud of my piece, as I feel that I have achieved my goal of reminding the viewer of the building blocks of which we are made. Deoxyribonucleic acid makes our existence possible. It is an amazing molecule. In addition to showcasing the DNA, I wanted to evoke the viewer's feelings through the expressive yet simplified form of the humanoid figure. Its posture suggests slumber, representing the hidden chemistry within all of us, the hidden science in the art of life.